as well. The question is, as on the order paper, James Daly. Well, I, it's a pleasure to follow. Um, I don't think he's quite my neighbour in Rochdale, but we're very close in Greater Manchester. And when I, I obviously agree with every word that he said, and when I uh, thought about what I wanted to speak about in this debate, I will be bluntly honest, it was about my dad, and it was about um, my memories of him. And when you talk about the Irish di diaspora in Britain, it's exactly the point that the Honourable Gentleman has made, in that if, and which we all hopefully share this view, is we don't see our, any of ourselves as different, the Irish di diaspora is part of our everyday life. As the figures have said, that there are six million, I think it's, I've got the figures down here, but I think it's six million, it's estimated that many six million people in the UK have an Irish grandparent. So that means that you're probably going to have some form of relationship with somebody with an Irish grandparent. If you're not having a relationship with them, they're probably, you'll see them in the shop or you'll see them at the, at the place of work. Irish diaspora, Irish history, Irish culture, what it makes us all is there and here every single day. I could not be more proud of coming from an Irish Catholic background. Um, I have on my dad's side uh, two Irish parents, who, uh, Irish grandparents, Frank and Molly, who came to this country in the 1920s. Um, my dad and his sisters would tell me stories about their early experiences in Lockwood when they first came living in Huddersfield as, as native Gaelic speakers. They, were, they remember vividly the abuse, the insults, the way that they were treated. My dad always used to tell me the story about how his mum was walking down the street once and a bu bucket of water was poured over her head from a, uh, from a, a, a house window. So those early pioneers, certainly from within my family, they had to go through some d terribly, terribly difficult times. I'm very proud of everything that they've achieved because the fact that they took the step to come over here, the fact that they took the step to come over here perhaps to find a job, perhaps to find a bigger life means that I'm stood here, all my cousins are all over the country doing whatever they are doing in their lives. I'm pleased to say they're all positive, lovely people and therefore they are touching with their Irish heritage every single people, person that they meet every single moment of their life and that's a wonderful thing to have. On my mum's side, um, my uh, great-grandfather, uh, John, he was born in Athlone in West Meath. He came over here to Bradford in the 1870s. So that migration is not just from the 20s to the 50s. It goes back over many, many years. He married a Yorkshire lady. And again, without that, without those uh, routes, without people taking and being brave enough to come over here to a place they didn't know, to a country they didn't know, without friends in many circumstances, uh, many of us would not be able to have the lives that we have today. So when I look at the contribution of the Irish diaspora in Britain, I think it is everything. There is no negatives, there is no, nothing else to say. Every part of our life as a nation ha has a little bit of Irish heritage and Irish history uh, within it because we are all part of a wider story. I would like to tell one final story, Madam uh, Deputy Speaker, before I finish. Now, I was trying to think of what I could do, and I think the best way sometimes in this place to try and um, elicit and highlight a point is not to go on Google and find out facts about this, that, or the other. It's to speak from your own personal experience, the stories and the things that people have been through, and how they shape the, the country we are now and the country we want to, to, to be going forward. And... I always used to hear uh, stories in my youth from my family of Gerald Paddy Slavin. Now Paddy Slavin, I'm looking at the member for Rochester, they may not, may or may not know this, um, was, came over to uh, Huddersfield to Longwood in the 1930s. Uh, he is my great uncle, he is the brother of my grandma, born in Ochnachloy. Uh, and he came across here, um, he got a job, he worked hard, uh, he got married, um, he looked after his family and he went uh, and served on the HMS Nelson during the Second World War as a gunner. A true hero, a man who served um, the, the nations of, the, of, uh, of Great Britain and Ireland in every possible way. When he was in the army, he decided, or it may, not, may, have, may have decided to him, that boxing was the thing for him. And so a man who worked in the mills of Huddersfield, who brought up a family, who was a respectable man, in 1948, fought at Belfast for the heavyweight title of Ireland, uh, and he was the heavyweight champion of Ireland in 1948, and he went on to fight Don Cockle, Brian London, various other people. 
and within my family and within my experiences and within my personal uh, experience of people who have come over to this country and been part of a wider story, a heavyweight champion, a man who fought the great boxers of the era, a man who was a, a respectable, kind, caring uh, father, a good man, and I think that those qualities sum up my experience of the Irish diaspora in Britain, the Irish community that I grew up in Huddersfield, who were a central part of that town's identity, could tell endless stories about what, about what it was like in Huddersfield, but I'm sure it was similar to what was in Manchester. And I could not be more proud of the contribution that Irish people from over many hundreds of years, continuing right up to this day, those of us who are lucky enough to inherit that, that heritage and the opportunities that I got from my relatives who came over from Westmeath in the 1870s, the idea, the idea that my, my granddad Frank would, would, would even believe that he would have a Conservative MP as his grandson, I mean, it was just utterly, yeah, I can't even, yeah, exactly, yeah. I can't, I mean, I think the people have said, no, no, what I mean, but it's just, it just, it would be mind blowing for him. And hopefully, if they, when they're all looking down, hopefully when they're seeing me and my cousins and all my, the rest of the family, and that applies to everyone all over the country who's lucky enough to have Irish heritage, well, they will say that there was a complicated history, there were challenges, there were some awful times, and we could talk about the history forever. But the sacrifices those people made created opportunities for us that we are enjoying today, and I will be forever grateful. Yeah. Yeah. John Kirk.